Andy and Robin have asked me to teach you about Sam. No, Sam is not a person or an animal. Sam stands for Successive Approximation Model. Phew! Can't believe I just said that. Oh my, what was I thinking? Hamsters have a limited attention span and this looks like a big job. Volunteering to do this was a big mistake. So, I'm going to turn this over to Sandy and Robin, who are much better prepared to talk about this important educational design process. See you later, alligator. Now that Harvey, the little renegade, has abandoned his mission, Sandy and I will give you an overview of this important e-learning process. First, let me tell you that there are many e-learning course design models and theories, and that each will help you develop more meaningful e-learning courses. Everyone has a different opinion of what works best. The theory or model that you choose just needs to align with the needs of your online learners and the subject matter that you are teaching. I'm Sandy, and I'm going to begin talking about the SAM model. To start with, SAM is an agile, iterative collaborative framework for the instructional design process. The model relies on designing effective instruction through team collaboration. There are two versions of the SAM process. SAM 1 is the basic process. It's a good fit for small projects and small teams that don't require a lot of complicated technology. It's basically a single design loop that uses evaluation, designing, and developing to complete the project. This loop is repeated as many times as needed, allowing everyone's ideas to be discussed, prototyped, and tested very early in the design process. This allows a usable product to be created quickly. SAM 2 is an extended version of SAM 1. It is meant for more complex projects and utilizes a larger collaborative team. It consists of eight iterative instructional design steps that are spread across three project phases. The first of the three phases is the preparation phase. This includes something called the savvy start, which is a combination of brainstorming and gathering information. The second phase is iterative design, and it looks at the basic design, the layout, the technology choices, interactivity, and the quality of the content, and the equivalency to other learning opportunities. Robin talked about the second phase, which is iterative design, and she said that it looks at the basic design, the layout, the technology courses, interactivity, and the quality of the content and equivalency to other learning opportunities. I want to get more specific about this because this is very important. During the layout phase of the second phase, the model considers the flow of the content, the colors of the design, and are there learning nuggets and chunking of the content, and is there an easy and efficient flow of information and experiences throughout the course. The technology phase considerations include questions about do the learners need prerequisite skills to use the technology? What are the file sizes that are required? Is it easy access to the internet and the technology? And what is required if they use mobile devices? During the iterative design phase, we also look at interactivity to look how the course will interact with its users. Is it peer-to-peer? -peer? Is it peer-to-professor? Are there multiple learning activities? Are there interactive learning activities? And how can the design reduce the transactional distance between the learner and the content? The last thing that we look at in this phase is quality evaluation, and it's always important. The quality of the content is reviewed. Is it hands-on? Is the fluff been removed? And real learning content embedded? And how is plagiarism avoided and controlled? Finally, is this an equivalent learning opportunity for the students? The last of the three major phases is the iterative development phase. And this is pretty easy. You create, you adjust the content, you redo content and the processes, you implement, you review, you pilot, and then you do it all over again until you get a finished project that you like. For both of the SAM models that we've talked about, 
The emphasis is on using an iterative approach for creating the end product right from the start, while continually analyzing and refining the work as it's being produced. Now that we've described the SAM development process to you, here is why we like it and here are some of the drawbacks. First, we like the process because it's recursive rather than linear, much more true to life, and iterates from the early designs in the prototype. It efficiently combines both the ADDI model and rapid prototyping, and it has a very cool, savvy start, which is a comprehensive team meeting. This process seems to work better with larger organizations or groups since it's built around the team model. And now for the drawbacks. One concern is that a variety of input from more people can affect the cohesiveness of the project. And since collaboration is a vital part of the process and important to the success of the project, the selected team needs to be able to work well together. And according to eLearning World, Mistakes are inevitable, and these may result in overlooking potential issues in the project. As you smart humans have probably figured out, Sandy Robin and I use the SAM-1 method to produce the short learning module on the SAM design process. Surprise! Now I want to show you an example from Alan Interactions, the developer of the process, of how Sam was used to create a training video to protect some really good friends of mine. You remember Sebastian from his epic performance in The Little Mermaid. Ariel, listen to me. The human world, it's a mess. Life under the sea is better than anything they got up there. Well, he's a lobster too. Meyer, Midwest retailer of 213 supercenters and grocery stores, needed to train employees on proper lobster maintenance and handling. So Allen Interactions created an e-learning course where Marcel, a French-Canadian crustacean, serves as a tour guide where he points out the key measures including water level, temperature, salinity, and ammonia that must be monitored to keep his temporary home safe and stress-free. Learners practice reading results and selecting the appropriate corrective actions in the activity log. Finally, they enter a lobster tank challenge simulation, where they must identify the area of the tank that needs attention and take the correct action. As an outcome, Meyer hopes to reduce lobster throwaways by 50%, expected loss by 25%, and increase sales and improve customer satisfaction. enjoyed this micro-learning lesson on the SAM development process. Robin, Sandy, and I hope you will consider this content when developing your e-learning courses. Thank you, and see you soon online! <laughs>